Thank you all. It's a pleasure being here, esteemed personalities on the dais, uh, members of ASOCHAM, and guests at today's uh, event. Um, of course, a little later today, we are going to be releasing, uh, in collaboration with ASOCHAM, um, as PwC, our insights in terms of um, what the video on demand, or now more colloquially known as OTT, as a segment of the media entertainment industry, how it is going to pan out over the next uh, four or five years, specifically in India. And, and, and before I come to specifically what um, we see will happen in India, uh, OTT in its true sense um, has been a disruptor. Uh, it is, it is um, ubiquitous in its presence. Uh, it has moved from the fringes just about, say, about six, seven years ago to the very center of um, consumption of content uh, as far as the consumer is concerned and, and also in terms of how businesses are grappling with it. Uh, so it is, it is really synonymous uh, with, with disruption in its true sense. The fact that anything can be consumed at any point of time and anywhere is something which is definite and a scalable reality today. It has expanded the sheer amount of time which is now available to consumers to be able to consume content. The fact that when you are mobile, you can still go ahead and consume content has effectively expanded the time which is available to everyone to be able to consume content. And that has an impact in terms of the growth potential that it presents. Of course, all of that at some point of time is also hemorrhaged by the fact that uh, there is only so much that anyone has capacity to spend on. So you might expand the amount of time which is available, but your spending capacity is, is somewhere definite and finite, and, 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 and that, that uh, has its own, own bounds. Um, clearly, um, it is, it, uh, like most disruptions today, it, has, it, has, uh, it was born out of the use of technology in its initial form. And technology plays an uh, even greater role today, but not in the normal sense that we think about it. Uh, in, in, the, in the initial periods, technology um, was there in terms of creating a platform to be able to provide an interface with the user. Over a period of time, when we're looking at the value drivers, mainly for businesses, in terms of um, uh, what is it that um, was critical for, a uh, for the success, it has slowly moved from, it moved from technology to content. The fact that you need to have uh, unique content to be able to attract audiences is something which then became paramount and continues to be paramount and it will play out in different ways. But over a period of time, as there has been segregation in respect of the OTT players, and each one of them is coming up with a unique set of content, then the fact is, what does the audience or the consumer do? Let's just step back. When the digital ecosystem came into play, in the sense that no book will ever go out of print, every movie will have an outlet, every news will have a viewer, the fact is there was abundance of choice with a consumer. And you know what happens when there's excessive choice with a consumer? The consumer gets numb. He doesn't know what to do. And therefore, the more critical play going forward in our view, in terms of the OTG businesses or in terms of interface and, and, and crystallizing, apart from the fact that you need to have unique content, is how are you going to get to understand your consumer better? And that is important. So how do you get the right content at the right price to the right person at the right time? Is what is going to make businesses succeed. And therefore, the focus has, is slowly going to shift from the fact that, yes, it is going to be a hygiene that you need to have good content that you're going to get across to consumers, 
but more importantly, how is it, how well do you understand your consumer? And the whole science and the practice and the application of analytics and data is where it comes in. And therefore, when I talk about technology coming back into, into the center of business, this is what I mean in terms of what is it and how is it that you will go about attracting, retaining, and, 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 uh, and, and ensuring that you have the users with you. And when users get central, to any business model, it is, not, it is not a surprise anymore that this has no longer remained the domain of the traditional media players. So you have telcos who want to enter the OTT markets, you have e-commerce players who want, to, who want to enter the OTT market, because at the end of the day, the whole thinking is that if you have access to the consumer and if you can understand the consumer well, then you'll be able to get him the right offering. Which then brings us to the next question in terms of what is the whole story on monetization so far? It has been a struggle because everyone knows there are two uh, basic modes of monetization. Uh, one is advertising and the other one is subscription. And as far as subscription is concerned, step back and think about it. Who were the early adapters as far as digital platforms were concerned? They were all people and continue to be people who are in the audience of uh, 18 years old, okay, onwards or before that, and, uh, and increasingly now it is even people who are younger to that, and they have grown up on a diet of free media and free sharing. Trying to get those people to pay is a difficult task, right? And so whether it's a mature market or even in our country, uh, we, we are now growing with a generation whom I call the cord never. We may, have, we, have, we may have heard about cord shaving, we may have heard about cord cutting, but the cord never generation is very real. These are people who are only consuming content on mobile devices and not on fixed devices. And they are consuming content in an era of free media and free sharing. So think how difficult it is going to be for any businesses to get them to pay, which leaves us with advertising. And the struggle in advertising has been, clearly the trends that we see as far as consumptions globally, not so much so in India so far, but globally, that the consumption has moved from the linear platforms to the non-linear platforms. But advertising has not moved at the same pace. So you still see that the bulk of advertising Okay, as a proportion of how the consumption is actually taking place is still going and sitting on the linear mediums, whether it's television, it is, um, it is print, it is magazines, most of it is still going in there. And why is that so? There are two primary reasons for that. One is the whole issue uh, of accurate measurement. People are still struggling in terms of uh, how do you ensure that the measurement in respect of the efficacy of the advertising is uh, that you have robust systems to be able to deliver that. And second is the whole issue around trust. How do, how as an advertiser uh, can I be certain that my ad is appearing against the right and appropriate content. We, we all hear about in terms of the struggles that uh, people are having uh, and businesses are having in this context. So till those issues are not solved, combined with the fact that you have technology which enables a consumer to either skip ads or block ads, there's also a struggle in respect of how we're going to even monetize as far as advertising is concerned. But in my mind, and as our view, we find that advertising is going to be the greatest driver because it offers a unique opportunity in case of an OTT business to be able to narrow cast an advertising as against having to broadcast one, which means that you're going to increase the efficiency of your ad spend. Again, it goes back to the analytics, it goes back to the data, who is the consumer, what is it, that you want uh, to uh, present to that particular individual. Once you get that data right, then you'll be able to even get your advertising right as far as the consumer is concerned. The other day, 
I saw, uh, and, and this has been employed, I know, in the UK, US, definitely Hong Kong, some part of Singapore, and possibly in two, three occasions in India, um, with, where you actually put in advertising in the content. So this is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about in-content placement. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a situa situation, for example, the original content had a guy actually driving a Merc, but to the use of technology, they're able to morph that particular car to an Audi, potentially to target a person who Audi wants to target. And this is all a part seamlessly in the content itself. So when you talk about that kind of advertising that you will do, uh, again, which doesn't require a break in the content, but at the same point of time, which is targeted specifically to that particular individual, you're going to get into a different realm, different realm how advertising is going to play a big role. So in terms of monetization, I think we will have to um, uh, go through both these elements in terms of uh, subscription and advertising. Subscription has its own challenges because of historically how this whole medium has grown, but advertising is something which I believe uh, is, 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 is easier to tackle and handle provided you have the right data. Finally, coming to India, uh, what is our view in India? We all think of OTT as being a very uh, a, a big phenomena as far as the mature markets are concerned of Europe's US, North America, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, which is true, which is true. The, the, the larger markets do sit there. Um, our own study, uh, as per our own forecast, we believe that India is going to be in the top 10 uh, OTT markets in the world by end of 2022 in absolute dollar terms. So it will be the top 10 markets. So that is the potential as far as we are concerned. So we are going at a CAGR which is far higher, uh, which is 20 plus as compared to the general CAGR as far as the world is concerned. So in, in, in terms of the overall growth and where we'll ultimately end up, um, that is where we will be. now. Again, that is not something which is different from how we see the overall entertainment and media market as far as India is concerned. Again, by 2022 or maybe slightly before that, India will be in the top 10 entertainment and media markets where you include everything to do with um, newsprint, cinema, TV, uh, and, and all the uh, conventional linear and non-linear forms of uh, media. India will be in the top 10 market out there. So it is, it is not surprising uh, in, in that context that even as far as OTT is concerned, we will be there. But there is one significant difference in terms of the India story compared to the rest of the world. How much of the non-linear mediums, which is really the digital mediums, are going to cannibalize the linear ones. What is it going to do to our uh, movie business? What is it going to do to our television business? What is it going to do our, to our print business, which are, which are the linear historical um, mediums? Our view is, as far as India is concerned, both are going to coexist and grow for at least the next seven to 10 years, because we have space for both of them to grow. Our, our adaption as far as OTT, despite the level of growth that we're going to see, despite the fact that we're going to be the 10th largest market, are going to have our own challenges, whether it's in terms of pricing, because if you look at the price points of OTT compared to, say, the television broadcast in terms of how much a consumer can get, um, they are at a different price points. To add to that, you have to also pay for the data that you use to consume uh, content. Um, not, and, and, and the fact also remains that whereas initially um, you are going to get into the digitized ecosystem as far as the primary languages of English and Hindi are concerned, you slowly have to transcend that to the local languages because that's going to be necessary for the purposes of growth. So over a period of time, in terms of um, uh, what we believe, both the linear and the non-linear mediums are going to grow in India, but of course the OTT platforms are going to grow at a much faster CAGR as compared uh, to the linear medium. So as far as the um, 
future and the forecast is concerned, it is, it is something uh, which, is, which is significantly promising. Um, there, is, there is going to be, to some extent, an overhang, not only in India, but globally in terms of how regulations are going to play out. We're going to discuss some of that uh, later today, but beyond that, uh, there is enormous uh, um, advancement or developments, rather not advancement is the wrong word, uh, in, in, in terms of how the tax, um, taxation of all the digital uh, businesses, including that of the OTT platforms, is, 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 is going to pan out across the world. So these are some of the issues which will develop uh, over a period of time and uh, will, will have to be addressed. But all in all, clearly something that uh, a space that has to be looked out for, as I said, as I said in the beginning, it has moved from the fringes to the center of the strategy for 